Do you want to build something like this? A simple and smooth drag and drop interface, just like in Notion? Stick around, I've got an easy way to make it happen. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are diving deep into something every React developer needs, a drag and drop functionality. Whether you are building a task manager, Kanban board or sortable list, I will show you how to do it in the modern way with DND kit. So what is a DND kit? A DND kit is a lightweight, performant, accessible and extensible drag and drop toolkit for React. So why I chose a DND kit? Because it is optimized for performance, it has built-in animation utilities, it supports advanced custom interactions and it has TypeScript support, which is very important. Let's take a look at the example, how it works on their website. So here is a draggable component. Let's drag it here and drop. Here is it. We will try to implement something similar, but we will follow the Notion example. So we'll have um, two column lists and we will try to drag and drop components from one column to another. So let's dive in into code and try to implement it. To get started, uh, let's create React app with Vite, TypeScript and Tailwind. And then uh, we need to install our DND kit using this command npm install DND kit core. We can actually copy it from here. On my end setup is ready and let's define a structure of this feature now. So first we will need to create column and cart components and then we need to render them in app component. In the third step, uh, we will need to create a special custom hook, which will be responsible for that drag and drop functionality. And it actually will hold the state of that drag and drop functionality. Let it be use uh, board hook. And that hook uh, we will need for our reusability and uh, separation of concerns. Also, we will need to create some types for that hook. And finally, we need to wrap all things together. So that's the plan. So let's start uh, with a column and card components, and then we'll jump into a creation of the custom hook. I have already created components folder and here I already have card and column uh, components. So let's uh, take a look at them. So let's first go to the column. The component itself is pretty simple, so it will receive column in the props and then uh, we will iterate through that columns and we render card inside. So now let's go to card component. And as you see, it's also pretty simple. We will render just uh, some container and title and subtitle of the card. Basically, that's it. Before hook implementation, uh, let's create this types. So we will need item type with ID title and subtitle. And also we will need column type uh, with ID title and items, which will be the array of item type. Now let's jump in into hook implementation. And before we start implementing the logic of the hook, uh, we need to create some uh, static um, hard-coded data. For that purpose, I created this initial data. And here we have two columns, one to do and one is done. And here we have some uh, demo cards, which we will try to drag and drop between the columns. And here is the main logic of uh, use board uh, custom hook. So let me walk you through line by line. At the first line of the custom hook, we have uh, use state where we hold the state of the columns and by default uh, we need to set initial data to that used state. And right after we have handle drag and function uh, which is uh, exposed uh, out of the custom hook. That function receives event object and here we need to get two values from that event. It's going to be active and over. And the first check we have here where we use that over in an active. So here we check if a uh, component is going to be dropped to the valid uh, column. And also here we check if active ID is equal over ID, then we return because we don't want uh, item to be just reordered in the same position. In the next part, we have source column and destination column. And here we uh, doing a search in columns and we try to find in column items if uh, there is an item equal to active ID item and also in destination column we look in the columns and the check if uh, column ID is equal to over ID and after that uh, we have a statement here which says if uh, not source column or not destination column then we return this is just to um, avoid unexpected errors. So here we make sure that 
uh, we grab the valid item and we drop to the valid column. After locating the source column, uh, we pinpoint here the exact item dragged. And if it is not found, we return. And in the last part of that uh, logic, we have a state update. Uh, so here we use a set columns and also we need to grab the previous state. Then we define a new source and a new destination. And uh, by the way, we use here spread operator just to ensure immutability. And here we return, um, we have the previous state and we map through it and then we assign new values and have this return column. So, and uh, from that uh, custom hook, we return the state, the current state uh, columns and also that method handle drag end. So now we can import uh, that um, custom hook to our components and finalize the logic. And the first one to update is going to be app a component. So here we need to import our hook use board. And from that hook, we will need to use handle drag and and columns. Besides that, we need to use um, the indicate core, the one we installed in the beginning. And from uh, this library, we're going to use DND context and closest center. In the markup, we're going to use that DND context. And here we have that collision detection where we pass closest center. Why do we need that and how it actually works? So it calculates the center uh, point of a draggable component and also uh, the area where we want to drop this uh, draggable component and then it defines the one which is closest and then it defines where the item is supposed to be dropped. And also it has that on drag and prop where we need to pass handle drag and function which we uh, get from use board custom hook. After that, we use that columns uh, from use boards and we iterate through these columns and uh, here the component we're gonna render here, the column which we created in the beginning. In column component, uh, we need to import a use a droppable from the indicate core. And here in the beginning of the component, we, we will use it. Uh, so uh, from here, we will need set node ref and assign it as a ref to the main container. And also to, we need to pass to use a droppable ID and it's gonna be column ID. After that, let's go to the cart component. In cart component, we're gonna use use draggable instead of a use droppable uh, from the indicate core because we're gonna drag cards from column to column. Inside the cart component, uh, we will use attributes, listeners, set node ref, and transform from use draggable. And also it will need the item ID. The next part, we define styles uh, of transform to have that smooth transition of the card from column to column. And then uh, whatever we got from uh, use draggable, we need to pass as a props to the con div container. So we need to assign ref, we need to use that style and assign that style we defined in the beginning. And also we need to pass that listeners and attributes. That's it. Let's move now to the browser and see how it works. Here are two columns uh, to do and done and uh, here are some items in uh, to do column. So let's try to move it to done. Here is it. You see it uh, perfectly works. Let's try to move it back. Perfect. Let's also try to move them all to done. Great, that is drag and drop, simplified and powerful. But remember, this is just the beginning. You can scale this implementation by integrating complex and nested drag and drops, uh, multi-container setups, or even introducing custom animations. Plus, using DND Kit with a state management uh, like Redux uh, can make your application even more robust and scalable. If you found this helpful, uh, please uh, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and let me know in the comments how you plan to use drag and drop in your next project. Also, let me know if you like the explanation, if it was clear to you, so I can make uh, further adjustments in my next videos. Happy coding and see you in the next one.